I'm just telling you guys now, today's video is a wild one. Over many years of fossil hunting, I have found handfuls of megalodon teeth, mastodon teeth as big as my head, and even giant ground sloth claws. But on today's adventure, I uncovered what may be the rarest Ice Age fossil that I have ever found. And if you want to see how I found it, we first need to head to my office. Well, we've managed to get safely down river. It is a beautiful day and I have three full tanks and at least eight to nine hours that I can be diving. And with that much time and good conditions, I don't doubt that once we get underwater, we're gonna start finding some really cool stuff. But the only way to ever find out is to actually put in the work, put in the time and get a little bit dirty and gross. We are loaded down pretty heavy today because the current is especially strong in this location. But I've got this, and this will help me stay on the bottom. And we're gonna work our way up this exposure, see what's on the surface. And after that, we'll do some fanning and see if we can't uncover anything that's buried. But for me, right now, all I need to do is get underwater. It did not take long before we started finding our first megalodon teeth. And when you're finding them right off the bat like this, it typically means that you're gonna have a pretty good day because where you find one megalodon tooth, there are hundreds in hiding. Well, that's the first nice meg today. I just safely tucked it away and we're gonna get back into the deep. Now, this spot is pretty unique in that you also find really high quality Ice Age fossils. So the hard bottom that the river is eroding are Miocene sediments, which contain the ancient shark teeth. But everything above that formation are Ice Age sediments that contain unique fossils like this camel tooth. It is hard work crawling along the river bottom like this, but to me it's worth it when every few feet you're picking up ancient shark teeth. And like this little guy, you could barely see it picking out. It's more obvious than a lot of the ones we find, but every single one is cool to pick up. And I think the next tooth is gonna be even better. And I'm telling you, these teeth just keep on coming. Okay, I had to get out of the water and make sure that this crazy, beautiful tooth got to the boat. It came straight from the clay, and that's why it's so well preserved. This beater was about, I don't know, six feet in front of it. Looked good before I picked it up, but it's a nice size, but definitely a beater. Really, really cool. But now I am pretty excited to get back underwater. That thing is awesome. Here we go again. One of the incredibly important tools I use to discover these fossils are big blue dive lights. If you want to get your own lights from them, you can get 10% off linked in the description below by using the code Digging Science. When it comes to fossil hunting, I typically prefer quality over quantity, which is why I was so happy with what I'm finding. These teeth still have rays or sharp serrations. And the next tooth that I found is probably the best lesser white shark tooth that I have ever found. Woo! 
We've got three really nice teeth, but this tank is dry. It's time to swap them out again. There they are. Three more really nice teeth from the last part of that dive. Really happy with that Mako, though. That's an extinct white shark, the lesser white. They're not really Makos, but this is the shark that evolved into the great white. And it's as big as these juvenile Mag teeth. Really, really cool. I got my tank swapped and I'm ready to get back under water. So I get asked in almost every single video where I'm finding Megalodon teeth in a river, how could there possibly be these giant shark teeth in a small river like this? And the easiest explanation is that this wasn't always a river. 2.6 to 12 million years ago, this area was completely submerged underwater. In fact, it was a nursery. Large Megalodons would come, have babies, and those babies would be in a safer area to grow up and compete for resources, which is why in Central Florida, South Florida, the teeth are typically smaller than you would find in, say, Georgia or South Carolina, which were more of a hunting ground for these giant sharks. Oh yeah, remember how I said there are Ice Age fossils here as well? Well, get ready to see a very, very cool one. this to the boat. Wow. Wow. Freaking mammoth tooth. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. This wear right here, this weird little indent, is from where the tooth behind this one was pressing into it. This thing is perfect. Beautiful color. Every single plate is there. I really don't want to handle it too much in case I might damage it. You can tell it's really delicate with some of the pieces down here. But when I was in there, near it, we were also finding pieces that I didn't show on camera. But these are giant chunks of ivory. Real ivory. And based off the cross hatching, I'm pretty sure that this is mastodon. So there might be a mastodon tusk in there, or even mastodon teeth. That was, without a doubt, a pretty awesome dive. We're changing out batteries right now in my dive helmet. And with the tanks, we're changing those out. And we're gonna get back underwater. There's a lot more time traveling we can do today. And I know I've got another 40 yards, maybe, of really, really good material. And I'm ready to find some cool stuff if there's more in there. Now, as cool as that mammoth tooth was, it is not nearly as rare and interesting as one of the Ice Age teeth. Well, technically found two, so stick around for that two Ice Age teeth Ooh. that we find. Okay. 
Okay, we need to get that back to the boat. That is, I saved Predator and Age. Holy crap, holy crap, holy crap. Is that what I think it is? That's definitely Predator. That's definitely something really, really, really rare and unique. I'm thinking maybe, let's get that look on that a bit better. I'm thinking maybe an incisor, but if that's an incisor, that thing is absolutely huge. It'd have to be Smilodon or Sabertooth Cat. Like that would be ridiculously rare. Maybe it's a lower canine to a cat too. I don't know, but that is unique. Like unique enough where I have never found anything like this before. As cool as all of these shark teeth that we were finding, this absolutely takes the cake. You do not find Ice Age Predator material that often. For every one of these, I'll find hundreds of Megalodon teeth like these. It's not even a competition. These things are way out of that league. Well, the moon's out and it's getting dark, so I think my day is officially over, but I still have a ton of cool stuff to show you, but it's all gonna have to wait. I decided for my next hunt that I would go looking specifically for Ice Age fossils in a spot that is only accessible on foot. I'm already missing the safety and security of the boat. So the plan for today is to take it slow and safe and see what we could possibly find. This was a bittersweet hunt for me because we would end up losing all of my dive lights in both my GoPros. Big Blue would end up replacing all the lights that I lost. And if you're interested in getting your own Big Blue dive lights, you can check out their link in the description below to get 10% off. We really can't thank them enough, but more on them in the next video. Right now, we want to talk about the incredible fossil that we did find that ended up saving the trip. And then we have this. Definitely an extinct predator canine. I gotta figure out what species. It almost looks like another saber cat lower canine, or maybe like one of the big bear incisors, but it's got this little edge right here, which makes me think, let's see if we can get closer. Yeah, see this little edge? That makes me think this was on the side of the jaw, so probably a lower canine to a big extinct species. If we don't find anything else today, that's a trip maker. I'm really excited to figure out what that species is. If it's another saber cat canine, I mean, lightning can strike twice, right? All right, that might've been a little bit of a jarring transition, but we have figured out what those two teeth are and we are heading to the Brevard Museum of Natural History and Science in Florida to compare these to a life-size replica of this incredibly unique animal. So we're about to get past Jacksonville and I've got my little family unit with me. And I think it's about time for, I keep trying to say, montage, montage, montage time. Bubby, I see it. It's over there. As James would say, oh, we're gonna see him in just a second. I see their car. Let's go. What's up, fam? You guys ready to look at some rocks? Would ya? Oh, cool. All right, I don't like dolls. They scare me. This is my digging science camera crew. Look at that. That camera's as big as your face. Oh, I see a professional in the future right there, for sure. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. The Brevard Museum is a small museum outside of Cocoa Beach where we have had fossils on loan for over five years. We wanted to come to this museum specifically because they have a life-size replica of the animal we believe that we found. And we want all of you to visit for yourselves so you can check out some of the very Ice Age fossils that we ourselves have found. When you think of the Ice Age, typically people think about the big animals, the impressive mastodon, the formidable giant ground sloth. But really, the holy grail, at least to me, of fossil collecting in Florida are the predators, like this Smilodon. And this is what I believe we found. Now, the most obvious feature about this animal are its gigantic sabers. Now, surprisingly, that's not actually that uncommon of a feature 
and these extinct animals. The first animal that had sabers like this were the Gorgonopsians 250 million years ago. They were early synapsids, which mammals are as well, but they more were like a cross between a mammal and a reptile while being neither. Having gigantic sabers like that comes with a few problems. The first is that you don't have a lot of space in that lower jaw. And because there's not a lot of space in the lower jaw, Smilodon canines, from the lower jaw at least, are actually much smaller than other big cats like the extinct jaguar or American lion. And honestly, that was the biggest clue telling us that these teeth were from a Smilodon. Also, I gotta say, I'm wearing my Trilobite Me shirt. It's Valentine's Day while I'm recording this, so I had to wear it. Back to the museum now. Our teeth are gonna be the teeth that are highlighted right now in yellow. We've got the lower jaw canine, and then it's either this lower incisor, this primary incisor up here, or the primary incisor next to the saber. Now, we would have loved to have found the saber instead. They evolved for the kill strike on the jugular of these large Ice Age animals. And that specialized nature, that incredibly special tool, is what actually led to these animals being vulnerable to extinction. Now, Smilodons are the most famous of the saber cats and probably the most successful. When the Isthmus of Panama connected North America to South America, there was another saber cat that evolved, not cat, big difference, saber marsupial that evolved sabers through convergent evolution. It's a beneficiary adaptation, so it evolved there as well. But the Smilodons were more successful and outcompeted the Thylacosmilus. Thyla Now, Smilodon eventually would meet its end, though, because of its specialized tool. When these Ice Age animals, these giant animals, went extinct at the end of the last glacial maximum about 13,000 years ago, this guy had nothing else to hunt. Without large animals like that, these canines were basically useless. And now you can only see them in museums or if you're lucky like I was to find them in the bottom of a river. We're not completely over with this story. I still need to report and document these two really cool finds to the state of Florida with my permit to the Florida Museum of Natural History. If fossil hunting is something you wanna do, you're gonna to need to get a permit to the Florida Museum of Natural History. And once it's reported, if the state isn't interested in it, it might end up in a museum like this, maybe even this one, and it will share a home with other fossils that I've found. So these are mammoth teeth, mastodon tusks and jaws that I've found and I've loaned here. And I think it's really cool that this can be another way I share natural history, not just the YouTube channel, but physically. You guys like that? Yeah. You guys like that? All right, fist bump. Jonathan can remember doing stuff at the top of his head. How many takes was that? First? Yeah, first take. And because I was such a good first take, what should people do that watch this video? Subscribe. Hey. Like. Like? And subscribe. And subscribe. And? And turn on the bell notification. We're climbing, guys. I don't think that's what it ate. <laughs> that's pretty big. Oh, hi. Hi, Nolly. Really wants to be on Diggy's Size. You want to tell him about this thing? Oh, my goodness. So excited. Courtesy of John the Valentine. Yeah. Courtesy I of find John rocks. The Pioneers used to ride these bad boys for miles. Did you know that? <laughs> we have to do outtakes. We have to do credits with my camera people. We got Jakey. James, did you do any work? No, uh, I said soda. some stuff. You said some stuff? That is soda. Okay. How about you, Nolly? Did you do any work? Yes, I did. <laughs>